to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing another really fun project. But before we get started, I wanted to make sure to thank everyone so, so much for the amazing support you guys gave me for my Griffin series. My Giant Griffin, each video did really well. You guys seem to really enjoy it, and I can't wait to start another giant project. Again, I can't really do that until I have the space or the griffin cells, so hopefully something like that happens soon and we could do maybe our giant dragon that I want to do, or even maybe a giant wolf or something. I'm really excited and to just want to do giant things right now. But today's video, we are going to be doing something kind of small. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a leaf gecko. So let's get started. Okay guys, I'm going to show you guys the pattern real quick, I'm going to show you all the different pieces of fabric we'll need, and then I'm going to start sewing the body for our leaf gecko. So pretty much for this body, you're only going to need two pattern pieces, and then you're only going to actually have three pieces of fabric to work with. So I've left it really simple. So I have the main body piece, this is going to be the side, and you'll need a left and a right for this. And then I have the belly piece which will work for the inside parts of the legs as well. Pretty much to get this pattern I just took our main pattern and I folded a piece of paper and I traced it and then I cut it out. Now for our fabric I'm actually going to be using a fake leather for this because I found a really cool brown color that has some nice scaling effect. Now the scales on this fabric are really interesting because some portions of the fabric was really small intricate scales and others were really large scales. So when I was cutting out my fabric for the body, I ended up cutting out the fabric with the really tiny scales to be the sides of the body, and then the belly part I decided to go for the more larger scale patterns. So that's why you'll notice a bit of a difference with the pattern of the scaling, I just cut it from different portions of the fabric. Now the sewing for this is going to be really simple. I'm going to take one of the sides of the body and the belly piece and I'm going to start sewing those legs. I'm going to sew the front and back of them and I'm going to leave the very ends open so we can add clay feet to it later. Now I am trying to avoid using pins for this because I don't want to have a bunch of holes in my leather. And being that it's not a plush fabric, it'll definitely show up. So I'm going to do this to one side of the body and then I'm going to take the other side of the body and sew it to the other half of the belly. Now I'm going to take the tail and I'm going to sew all the way around that as well. The pattern I drew out for this was a little bit ripply, kind of to give it more of a natural shape, but I ended up doing something a little bit different, so if you're doing your pattern you don't need to add all these little wrinkles. Okay, now that the body is all put together, I'm going to start adding some detail to it. So I want to give it kind of a bit of a sail or a spine, so I'm going to sew a portion of the back a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the tail, I'm going to sew around that as well. Now the last bit of sewing that I want to get done is I want to get this tail really looking like a leaf, or at least as best as I can. So I'm going to take some felt and I'm actually going to sandwich the tail between this and I'm going to try and sew a leaf pattern onto the tail and then cut off the extra felt. Basically for the sewing for this I'm trying to get the veins of the leaf, so I'm just going to kind of go a little bit random but making sure that there's always a middle to the leaf. Now this is where I had a little bit of a problem because I don't have a very strong sewing machine, it's not industrial or anything, so somewhere along the line about halfway through this tail I ended up having my needle break. And I realized this is really dangerous so the rest of the sewing I ended up doing by hand just to be safe. Once I was finally done with all the hand sewing, I took my scissors and I cut off all the extra felt. I also decided that I wanted to cut the edges of the tail as well and give more of a rough look. So I ended up cutting off that original seam that we first had and then kind of made little tassely bits. So I just kind of chopped at the leather. I ended up liking this a lot more than having the rough kind of bulky edge. Anyways, that is all the sewing for the body. Now we're going to move on to making the clay head and the clay feet. So I'm going to start with the clay feet first because they're really simple. All I had to do was I made a very simple wire frame, that way I had a wire for each toe, and I started covering it in clay. Once I had everything covered in clay, I used my tools and my fingers to blend everything together and I started adding some detail to it. Mainly kind of like a padding to the bottom of the foot. You'll end up doing this four times to make all four of the feet. After that, we're going to put these aside because we want to bake them at the same time as the head, so now I'm going to start on the head for our gecko. 
So for the base of this, just like the foot, I need some type of base to work on. So I have a lump of tin foil and I'm gonna completely cover this in clay. Once I have it completely covered, I'm gonna smooth my surface and then I'm gonna start adding details. So the first bit of detail I'm going to start with is actually marking out where the mouth is going to go. So I'm just gonna use my tools to draw it out and kind of refine the shape of it. I'm leaving it very simple because this piece is going to be kind of small and most of the detail is going to be coming from painting and decorating the leather. Now I know some species of geckos can close their eyes and blink because they have eyelids, but I believe a leaf gecko is one of those species that has to lick their eyes to keep them moist. So I'm really not creating an eyelid around my eye, I'm more of trying to frame the eye to make it look like it's not sitting on top of the head, but more of kind of coming out of the head, if that makes any sense. So after I have what's kind of an eyelid but kind of not finished, I'm going to blend it into the face and start adding details like the nostrils and stuff. Again, I'm not adding a whole lot of details to this because we're going to add most of the detail with the painting. So I'm pretty much done at this point. I'm going to bake this along with the feet at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45 minutes just to be safe. Once all of our clay pieces are out of the oven and have cooled to touch, we can start on the painting. So I'm going to do my best to try and match the browns from our leather, and I'm going to start primering all of our clay pieces. So I'm going to go over everything with a nice brown color, I'm going to let that dry. I might have to do a few coats of this, but I probably won't because brown pretty much covers everything really well. And then once that's dried, I can start adding some detail to it. So I can add some dark points, some light points, I can start adding kind of like a speckly bit to match the scaling, and then I can start working on the eyes. Now I'm really not adding a whole lot of detail to the face because I really want to add the detail to the eyes themselves because they're really super detailed and cool. So pretty much to do the eyes, I started with a nice kind of cream base, and then I started adding oranges and reds to it. After that, I painted on the pupil, which I decided I wanted to be kind of jagged because I've seen some leaf geckos with kind of a jagged pupil, and I thought it'd be cool. And then I started going around that with more detail, some white and some reds and different things, and just until I liked it. After I was done painting the eyes, all I did was I touched up around the eyes because I did kind of bump it a little bit, and then I'm going to let this dry. After the paint has dried, I'm going to go over everything with a nice layer of resin to lock in the paint, protect it and everything. So this is going to sit overnight to dry, and then we can start putting everything together in the morning. Okay, it's the following morning, all of our clay pieces are finished and we can start putting everything together. So I'm going to be using a combination of E6000 glue and a little bit of hot glue to hold everything together. So I'm going to start with the feet and I'm just going to glue these into place at the very ends of the legs. I'm going to do this to all four feet. I'm going to let them dry a little bit so I don't worry about them falling off, and then I'm going to add the head to the piece. I'm going to do the same thing that we did with the feet to the head, it's just a larger version of what I did previously. And then after that, the last thing I did was I kind of messed around with painting a little bit of the leather to kind of give it some highlights and lowlights and different things, and then I was all finished. guys and that's how I made a leaf gecko. I had so much fun. I made three of them for my Etsy shop so make sure to check the links down below if you want to buy any of them. Thank you guys so so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!